Awesome. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode titled Mental Mess to Success. I am very excited to dive into this topic today with you guys. I have a special guest. Her name is Susan Johnson. Susan graduated from Drake University with a bachelor's in sociology. And since her diagnosis of bipolar one in 1995, Susan's true passion in life is to help break the stigma surrounding mental illness and bring hope to those living with one. Susan is the author of some dreams are worth keeping a memoir of my bipolar journey. And she is an accomplished international speaker and guest blogger for the mental health magazine, BH hope, along with being a TEDx speaker. So without further ado, welcome Susan to the podcast. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here with you today. I always get so excited being able to do these things. So thank yes, you for that. Of course. And, you know, just a little background, you know, before we kind of get in here, I, I, I connected with Susan, you know, on this awesome website and I, I watched her Ted talk and I watched her Ted talk and she talks about, you know, the being diagnosed with bipolar. Like you, you guys know, I also have that diagnosis as well. And then writing her story about this and really sharing it because she has that passion of helping others shatter that stigma as well, which I was just so drawn to. And I was like, I would love to speak with you and love to bring this to the table because I always, I always know you guys get so much value out of these stories and the tips and tricks that my awesome guests bring to the table. So Susan, I'd love to hear, you know, just a little bit more about you and what really lights you up. What lights me up being on podcasts like this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's, see, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to talk about this because, you know, this, this topic here that we get into of, you know, uh, bipolar disorder and having struggled with your mental health, what has that journey looked like for you? If you can kind of walk us through, you know, sure. since, you know, from the start to where you are now, I'd love to hear that. Okay. Let's talk about what bipolar disorder is first. Yes. In case some yes. people listening or watching this do not know what it is. Perfect. I don't know if your definition goes along with mine, but this is always the one I use. Um, bipolar disorder is a mood disorder. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain, which causes euphoric highs, known as manias, devastating lows to the point of suicide. And it's a genetic illness, which can be treated and is in my case with medication. Yeah. And, and exactly. And same, same for me as well. You know, we can, we can also get into that too, like the, the background of medications. Cause that's, you know, exactly what kind of my journey was similar to that, but I don't want to give away the stage too much to my story. Cause Susan is here with us. So I would love if you could kind of walk us through that, you know, what was it like when you, what was it like for you initially when you got the diagnosis of bipolar? Like, what did you think? What were you feeling? And does, is it different from how you're feeling now? Oh, lots of questions. Lots of questions. <laughs> okay, let's start with the diagnosis. I was in high school and I experienced depression for the first time. It was junior year. And I had a lot of friends. I was a California girl all the way, was at the beach, and I was depressed. I slept all the time. I didn't want to be social with my friends. I was a social butterfly. My parents yeah. knew there was something wrong. So my mother is a nurse and her and my father took me to my first psychologist. So at that point I was able to work through the depression, you know, take off the dark glasses that they call mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and recover from that without a problem. And then I graduated high school and I found myself on a cruise ship. It was a graduation celebration and I experienced mania for the first time. And if you don't know what mania feels like, if you've ever taken a drug, it is higher than any drug mm -hmm. you can possibly be on. I found myself doing all these crazy things. I was dancing on tables. I was drinking margaritas. I was never a party girl, never a girl that, you know, I was never in trouble with anything. I had racing thoughts. I went with a friend. And later we found out she was pregnant at the time. Wow. We got so mad at each other. We went our separate ways. Oh my I gosh. found myself writing in this journal at like 2 a.m. listening to these vacuums. Mm -hmm. And I could solve all the world problems. 
you know, I had the answers to everything. And I looked at myself and I didn't recognize who I was. And I wow. knew something wrong. And my mother knew right away when she picked me up from that weekend, what was going on because my uncle has bipolar disorder. Yeah. So see the it. genetic. Yeah. Yep. So this is that genetic link. Uh, luckily she was able to find a psychiatrist to treat me from home or from his office oh. as long as I agreed to take lithium. Mm-hmm. Now I was scared to death of hospitals. You know, oh. you, there's nothing wrong. You know, you're a maniac. You don't have a problem. Why would I need to be in hospital? But I did agree to, you know, be treated by the psychiatrist and started lithium. Uh, which is a mood stabilizer. If you don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. Okay. That there's so many things that just hearing you talk about this and hearing you get into this, that I really resonate so much with you. And I know so many other people listening as well, because that's the thing that you find out, you know, when you're able to be open and transparent about these things is you're able to connect, you know, more with others who also share, share similar backgrounds or may, they may have a sister or a brother or a mom or a dad who also has this diagnosis as well. And I think that's so awesome that, you know, what you're doing with using your your story and your voice and sharing these things, because I feel like that is what really helps people connect and say, wow, you know, look at this story, you know, Susan's story, you know, going from, you know, being young and, you know, having that depression and then getting treated for that, but then also having the side of a mania as well. And, you know, really kind of not knowing exactly what's going on, but luckily, you know, having your mom who does, who has that connection, knowing your uncle also has, you know, in the family history with bipolar. And that's kind of, you know, similar to my um, family as well. So I think that's, that's so awesome too. Cause I'd love to hear from you, you know, about the importance of just like the people around you. Right. So like your support system and, you know, like your, your inner circle, like what, what does that mean to you? And do you think that's important? Like, and especially when you're struggling with your mental health to have those people around and in your life. Absolutely. You know from your own experiences, I'm sure, how important that network is, that support network. I have worked so hard uh, since I moved here to Las Vegas. Oh, cool. To, yeah, I live in Las Vegas to establish that in my life. I have so many circles, starting with my amazing husband of, we've been married 15 years. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yes. we're celebrating that in <laughs> June. I'm very excited. well early congratulations yeah man of my dreams uh, couldn't be happier Aww. with that so the support starts with him absolutely um, mom and dad I believe that our that my illness has brought us closer together through the years I'm happy to say we've been through so many highs and lows together mm-hmm. I'm really grateful for them and then I joined Toastmasters International amazing you know that yes that yes. is so cool how I overcome or overcame public speaking. Um, I was scared to death of it. So that's been a big support system for me. Author friends that I've made here in Las Vegas, church. And then even I work in a school. I work with special needs children that have learning disabilities. So I have a, a support network at school as well with wonderful teachers and principals wow and assistant principals and I'm that's just so blessed. cool um yeah no that's re- that's really cool to hear that especially you know talking about like your family right so your parents and having that support and like having them you know be there through the ups and downs and things like that because I feel like sometimes you know it can be it can be so hard to you know and especially with the relationships you know maintaining like healthy relationships, right. And boundaries. And, you know, cause I know I can talk on this of get, you know, getting caught up in, you know, relationships that weren't the best for, you know, your, oh, yeah. your mental health and then noticing, you know, um, you know, how overwhelmed this is and how stressful and how draining and exhausting you feel because, you know, just, you know, that goes for everyone, you know, whether or not you have, you know, a diagnosis of bipolar or depression or anxiety or, you know, schizophrenia or wh- whatever it is, right. Just really being able to pri- prioritize that because like you said, you know, you worked hard on, you know, building these relationships and these circles of having, you know, the author community and the community that you have at school, the teachers and your family, husband, all of these things, I think are amazing because, you know, when we really look at that, you know, when you really take a chance to step back and say, you know, what is, 
good in my life? You know, what, what are the things that I have to appreciate and be grateful for? There really is so much. And I'd love to ask, you you know, if you're ask you, you know, if, if you're interested in gratitude or if you've ever practiced gratitude and like, is like, what do you think about that? Cause I know, I know I'm like so into that. And I always love hearing, you know, people's take on that. Yeah. The attitude of gratitude. Yes. My friend is constantly reminding me of this, no matter what situations I find myself in these days. And I think it's really, really important. I'm very um, spiritual. I'm a Christian. I'm a Catholic. So it's very important. Um, I'm trying to learn to be grateful mm -hmm. <laughs> through the challenges of life. It's very hard. I journal. Yeah. I do a yes. lot of praying, uh, yoga you know, those types of things. It's hard yeah. though. I mean, to it, be real with you, it's hard it, when it gets hard to, to yes. be, Oh, thank you, God, for, you know, this situation in my life. It, it's hard. No, you're, you're a hundred percent. Right. And I'd love to ask you too, like in those moments, you know, when, when it is really hard and really challenging, cause I, cause I know you can sit there and say, Oh, cool. Okay, cool. Like I'll just go do yoga or I'll just do meditation or I'll just do a journal. But it's in that moment where you're really, you know, dealing with something, it's not always so easy to, you know, turn that off and just, you know, shift into this, you know, state that we, you know, that we kind of, think would help, right. With recognizing these things we're grateful for. So what really helps you, you know, in those moments, like, is there a certain thing that you go to, to help with that? I'd love to hear what, what there your is on. my dear friend, Sarah. She, yes. I text her. She <laughs> is, um, the God, my, she's the godmother. Uh, I'm the godmother of her, of her child. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So you'll so so just reach out. My own. I don't have kids of my own because of bipolar disorder. We chose yeah. not to have it because of the genetics and yeah. is my goddaughter and her mother is Sarah. Mm -hmm. And I text her and you know call her and spend time with her. And she reminds me, you know, to thank God through mm -hmm. everything. See, that's amazing. Like the, just like going back to that again, you know, like that support network of having those people in your life and you guys really, how important that is because, you know, especially when you're looking back on certain points of your life, when you feel like you didn't have that, you know, network, or you didn't have that support, you know, the same way that you do now, because I know that, and that shifts, that's different for everyone, right? Like at, at every point in your life, you know, you might say, oh, you know, during this time, you know, I don't really think I had those relationships, but I do now. And, you know, that's an awesome thing too, is like being able to cultivate those. And like you said, one of the biggest things that I think is really cool with your story is public speaking and doing the Ted talk, because you talk about how afraid you were of that and you didn't like it. And then overcoming that and getting up on stage and giving this speech about such an area of your life that, you know, it can seem really personal to some people and sharing this, I thought was so cool. So I would love to ask you, like, what was that like for you? That in was, you want to talk about bipolar episodes. I spent 14 months on that talk. Wow. I gave, it was all memorized. Wow. I don't know about you, Paris, but for me, memorizing things is really difficult, which is why college was so hard. Mm -hmm. I think it's different for everybody. Oh yeah. It's, it was, and everything had to be memorized. Wow. So, well, you did so good, you know, and I can link, I can link that because that that's what I think is so cool is that, especially when you're talking about, you know, this connection right between you know, mental health and mindset. Right. So, and like the fact that you poured into that and into your mindset and saying, you know what, I can do this. I'm going to get up on the stage. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to memorize this and I'm going to share this because you had a purpose and a mission, a mission and doing that to help others say, see, and say, you know, look at me, you know, I've overcome these obstacles and I've gone through this and this thing, but here I am today, you know, in front of you guys to let you know that, you know, it doesn't have to stop you. And, and, and here's ways of overcoming that. So I thought that was so cool because, you know, I'm also very, very similar to you. I was, you know, still like very afraid of public speaking, never, never would do it, you know, never thought I could do it or would know how to do it or any of these things. So I think that is so cool. And, you know, like what, so what was that like for you when you like stepped off the stage, like after you were done? Oh. You would think it was like victorious, but I was kind of beating myself up. I was like, oh, oh. did I say this? Mm -hmm. Did I say that? And then I went over to my coach and to a lot of like, oh my gosh, you nailed it, girl. Oh. And I was just <laughs> like, you know what? I did. Yeah. I was like, I 
did mail that. And, you mm-hmm. know, the phone's blowing up and emails are blowing up. And my husband couldn't be there because of COVID. Yeah. Because we only could have a certain amount of people. And mm-hmm. it got moved two times. Wow. Wow. Well, that's yeah. see, the thing is like, you did it, you did it. And that's, yeah. and that's what I think is so, is so cool is, and especially when you talk about that, you know, when with being done with it, you know, you'd be like, Oh my gosh, like, this is great. You know, I'm done. But I feel like so many people can relate to that of having done something and then having that voice, right. That inner critic come back of, oh, did you say this thing? Or did, did you forget this? Or was, you know, Oh no, like, you know, like having that fear of, how are people going to react? Like there's so many things that come up, but I think that that's so awesome. You know, like you have had the coach there and, you know, have your husband and friends and support all of these people who see that in you, because sometimes that's really what it takes is sometimes we don't always see this thing in ourselves at the time, but there's people around who, who say, you know what you did so good, you know, you really helped me. And that's, that's really what it is, is, and I feel like you can probably relate to this hundred percent of having people, you know, message you or send you an email or text or phone call, you know, after they read your book or watch your Ted talk and say, you know what, this, this thing that you brought up or this thing in your story really resonated with me. And I would love to ask you too, like, what is that like for you to have, you know, to get feedback from people on those things? It can be overwhelming in a good sense and in a bad sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's both, both sides. Yeah, it is. It's when you publish a book so private, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're up there for the world. Yeah. You critique it, to love it, to hate it. Um, but for the most part, it has helped a lot of people. And yeah. that was the point. And, and also, I, I think that you can probably relate to this too, of it being a helpful experience for you. Cause I know for me, Oh, that was it, the whole point. Yes. The whole point not to get published. The whole point mm-hmm. was a healing journey. That's yeah. Why I wrote the book. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. And I feel like that. that's the, that's the beautiful part to see that. Cause I feel like sometimes when, you know, we have these conversations, you know, around mental health, I feel like sometimes it could be easier to, you know, focus on the problem, right. Or, you know, what's not working or, you know, I've tried all these medications and nothing seems to work, or I've gone to, you know, all these different therapists, or I've tried all these things. And I just feel like nothing is working for me, but what I really love about these conversations and especially your story is being able to feature what, what does work, what did help, what the solutions are, because I feel like, you know, when we can put our focus there, you know, on the solutions and how to make this better. And that really is what I feel like helps move things forward. Right. I mean, like, I'd love to ask you your opinion on that. Cause I know you mentioned, you know, you brought up lithium and I was also, you know, with my hospitalization on that medication and still, still am on, you know, that one today. So I'd love to ask you, you know, like what, you know, what were your thoughts? Cause I know everyone kind of has a different perspective on, you know, medication. Some people are like really against it. Don't, you know, and, and are, are for it and different things like that. So I'd love to ask you, you know, like when you first started taking medication, um, how did you feel like initially, like about it? Well, I was always open to it, Okay, but there were my denial days as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I love to ask you, like, so when you say like denial days, like for me, you know, something that came up for me is, is I guess like a sense of dependency almost, right. Like, you know, feeling like, oh no, like I kind of feel like, some, you know, in the past, like I have, I feel like I have to rely on, th- on this thing. And what if I don't have it, you know, that, that kind of a thought. Actually, I never have felt that way. Oh my yeah. gosh. Okay. Yeah, Interesting. Honestly, See, I love. I never yeah. have felt that way. So yeah. So what, yeah. So with the, den- so with the denial part, like like talk more about that. Like, what do you, what do you mean about? Yeah. So for me, it was, uh, so I was diagnosed and then I moved to Iowa, went to college, as we mentioned, Drake yeah. university. And at that time I got so depressed. I needed a change in my life. Mm-hmm. So I moved to Virginia, lived with my aunts, um, got ended up in a toxic relationship. I had a psychiatrist and he didn't keep, he didn't refill my medication. Oh, okay. I was on an antidepressant. Mm-hmm. So at that point I went off everything. Mm. Disaster. Yeah. You know, lost job, my job lost, you know, the, the relationship, the toxic relationship just got worse. Verbally mm. abusive. I mean, it was 
it was disastrous. And my parents talked me into going to another psychiatrist, Mm -hmm. but I didn't tell them I had bipolar. Okay. I told them I had anxiety. Mm. But for me, that was denial. So he put me on medication. I lost mm, 20, 25 pounds. People wow. think I had anorexia. Wow. The drug, one of the drugs it was on for anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. And see, that's, that's what I think is, that's what I think is cool too, is like, you've had the experiences so you can help other people who might be in that position, right. Who might be in that position right now where, you know, they're, you know, struggling with, you know, whether finding like it's the right medication, the right therapist. And because, you know, for me, I feel like there's, I always try to encourage people, you know, just besides, you know, you know, going to counseling or taking your medications, doing things for yourself, right. In your daily yeah, life. Self-care your, is big. Yes. I just put a blog on that one, actually. See, um, see, yes. I mm. love, and like, I think that's so amazing because that's what I think really helps so much is our daily habits, right. And how we speak to ourselves, you know, also like poor, like what you do for yourself, you know, whether you listen to podcasts, like to read books, you know, write journal, go on walks, you know, exercise, what kind of foods yeah. are you eating? Are you getting enough water, sleep relationships? Yeah. There's things, there's so much. And I feel like we could talk yeah, for it's like, like a balancing act, isn't it? Yes. That's what I always say. It's like being yes. on a tightrope. You have to stay on it or you can slip off quite easily. Yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like that's like, that's what I like to to focus on too, is all those factors and how, you know, those can all come together to really help with prioritizing our mental health and having these more of these conversations. And, you know, I'd love to ask you too, you know, since, um, like what, what is your, um, this is a, I always love to ask everyone this question. Cause I always get a different answer and it's so fun to see what people say. So since you're out here today, Susan, on the master your mental podcast, I would love to ask you, what are you currently doing right now in this moment to master your mental? What am I doing at this moment? To master my mental. Huh? Make me think. Make me think. I like it. Yeah. I think. Just having this conversation mm-hmm. is mastering my, my mental. Mm-hmm. And see that that's what I think is so, and I, cause I feel like that's what I love about this is, you know, being able to meet with such awesome people, you know, like you and having them, you know, come out here and share your story, share your tips and share your experiences and really get into this stuff because, you know, sometimes I can feel like it can be challenging, you know, especially like, like, what was it like for you? So the, I guess, um, with your book, right. So publishing your book and doing all that, like when you published it after you did that, how did you feel? Like, did you have any kind of, you know, hesitations? Like, like, where'd you go back and forth? Like, Oh, like I did this and I'm, it's so awesome. And I'm so proud of it. Did you have those moments? Cause I know for me, I certainly, I definitely had those moments where I would kind of go back and forth with, Oh, like, well, you know, I, mean, I did this. About, like, who's reading this? Like my mom and dad are going to like know things. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Like my husband, you know what I mean? It's kind of scary. I mean, like mm-hmm. really let every, everybody you yeah. Know, you read yeah. your private details. Yeah, you're right. And that's, that's what I like though, about memoirs, right. Is going oh, yeah. into those details. And it's like, I feel like every time you you're done, you feel like, you know, this person kind of like, you feel like you're, you've met them before. And it's like, that's, what's really cool about it is because I feel like there's always something that everyone can relate to. Right. And like, even, you know, I feel like certain people, you know, who might not know a lot about, you know, bipolar disorder, they might feel like just because they don't know a lot, you know, they feel like they might not be able to relate as much, but I feel like there's always something within your story or my story or something someone else's story where they could say, Oh, I've had moments like this myself, or, you know, Oh, my sister has has experienced a lot of things similar to this. And wow, like reading your story really helps me understand, you know, how to connect with her better or how to help her better. Another interesting thing I wasn't really expecting is I'm hearing from a lot of families. Yeah. Now understanding my child who Mm -hmm. has this, thank you. Thank you for an insight. I use a lot of journals in my book. Yeah. So my manias are in there. And I was able to have, to use my doctor records for my psychologist. She took some amazing records. Um, so I was able to get a copy of them and then to, to jog my memory. Cause I don't think I would have remembered everything. Yeah. Exactly. No, me too. I, I relate to you as, as well. I feel like there's certain things you just don't have that memory of. And I, and I feel like that's the most beautiful thing about 
this story, right. Is having people come to you, right. Being able to say, wow, like I have a son or a daughter or a husband or a wife or whoever, who I feel like I, I totally understand better because it's, it's always, I feel like, I feel like sometimes it's hard to, you know, get it from that person because I guess like maybe sometimes the way they communicate it, you might not fully like understand it. But then when you read it, you're like, oh my gosh, like, look at what she's talking about. This is exactly what, you know, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So cool. So, so, so cool. Oh my gosh. And wow. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. Susan, I feel like I could talk to you. I know. All, we like, need to all... get together. I don't we even know do. where you live. Where do you live, Paris? I am in Scottsdale, Arizona and you're in Las Vegas. I am. Vegas. Super cool. We oh my gosh. Let's so see. We need to we exchange do. books. Come on. Yes, we do. We really, really do. And I, I can definitely sense like a lot more coming up after this, you know, a, a lot more collaborations and conversations. Cause okay. I love this and I love your story. I love what you're doing. You. And I love, you know, the fact that you are one of those brave souls who's able to share that. Cause not everyone is able to, and they want to. And I, I definitely feel like they're going to get there. They will at some point in their life, but it's different for everyone in their journey. So yes. I just want to thank you, you know, for coming out here and making the time to speak with me and share all of these awesome things that you did with us today. Um, it means a lot and I loved our conversation. I can't wait to feature it and you are amazing. So thank you, Susan. Thank you. I have one thing to leave with. Okay. Um, yeah. If, you, if anyone who is watching this or listening to this is struggling right now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because things will get better. Mm -hmm. Trust us on this one. 100%. And don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, so yes. many people are living with what we're living with. Mm -hmm. So always remember there's light at the end of the tunnel. That is Amazing. Yeah, I exactly. I love it. Oh my gosh. And you guys, okay. Whether you are listening during the daytime or the nighttime, I just want to say bye to you guys. And thanks once again for tuning into this episode and listening to Susan's story. I'm going to be sure to link some information about her in the show notes. So you guys can learn more about her and her journey. Um, and on that note, I want to end it there and say, thanks. Thanks to you guys for tuning in and thanks for Susan for coming out here. Thanks so bye guys. Me. Bye. Thanks.